Okay, welcome back to our teaching on the Song of Solomon, chapter 1. We just finished uh, verse 4 in our last teaching, and uh, so we're going to begin verse 5. In the NAS, it says, in verse 5, I am black but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Keter, like the curtains of Solomon. Now, it's interesting, I've heard people read this and you read the commentaries and they're all over the place. They're all over the book. It's just, it's amazing reading it. The word black is uh, Strong's number in the Hebrew 7838. It literally means sunburned. Sunburned. How many know what a farmer's tan is? I used to always have a farmer's tan. <laughs> I kind of have one now. You see, you lift up your shirt sleeve, and you're dark and tan down here, but right where that sleeve is, <laughs> you're, you're as uh, natural looking as, as you can be. So she was sunburned. She looked like a common farm girl. She didn't look like a, a princess. She didn't look, look like anybody special. She looked like a common farm girl. It says... I am black, it's literally, I am tanned or swarthy, but lovely. In other words, she's a very pretty farm girl working outside in the vineyards, getting burned by the sun. She looks like any other pretty young farm girl. Attractive, but otherwise just nothing special, not royalty. See, royalty wouldn't be sunburned. Royalty rides around in, in coaches, fine coaches with, with curtains so the sun doesn't uh, hit you hard. They have people with, with, with shade over you and, 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 uh, and fans going so you don't get too hot. But she's out working in the fields. And she says this to the daughters of Jerusalem, I'm sunburned. But I'm still beautiful, daughters of Jerusalem. I'm sunburned like the tents of Keter. See, there's, there's truth in this. For one of them, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and starting at verse 9. And I'm going to read this in Young's literal translation. It says this, For Jehovah's portion is his people. Jacob is the line of his inheritance. He finds him in a land, a desert, and in a void, a howling wilderness. He turned him around. He causes him to understand. He keeps him in the apple of his eye. Now, the interesting thing about the word, ap words, apple of his eye, is literally that word in the Hebrew is Strong's number 380, and it means literally the blackness of the eye. That's what the apple of the eye, it's round like an apple, but it's black. You see, the Lord looking at, at the bride also is looking through that darkness, that apple of his eye, at the apple of his eye. He's looking through that, that black part of the eye at that dark farm girl and saying, that's the apple of my eye. He's saying, I'm finding her in a desert, in a void, in a howling wilderness. It reminds me of the, the vision that, that Linda had of our church. And where we're at, standing on a desert mountain in a, uh, against a, a, a rock where the wind can howl through, but we're kind of slipped into a crack in the rock. I like that picture. That's a, the cleft of the rock. That's a safe place to be against the howling wind. He turns him around. He causes him to understand. He keeps him as the apple of his eye. The Lord did that to us this morning. He did that to us this morning. He did that very thing. The apple of the eye looks black, but in reality, it's perfectly clear. It has perfect vision. It looks black, 
But when you get up closer, you look at it sideways, you see, that's a lens. It's perfectly clear. The apple of his eye is perfectly clear. There's no darkness in God. But he sees the work of our hands. He sees the sweat of our brow. He sees the darkness that the sun has burned us. He sees what the enemy has done to us. He sees all things. It's perfectly clear to him. This also can speak of her looking at the Lord. She's black, like the apple of the eye. Her eye is centered on the Lord, and he is the apple of her eye. He is the apple of her eye. Verse 11 says in Deuteronomy 32, As an eagle waketh up its nest, over its young ones fluttereth, spreadeth its wings, taketh them, beareth them on its pinions. <laughs> God is waking up his nest. He's got nests all over the world. He's got 70s hidden in caves all over the world. And he's waking them up. He's shaking them awake. He's going to lift them up. He's going to bear them on his big wings. And he's going to carry them in the spirit. What an exciting time. What an amazing time to be before the Lord to be watching these events, to be watching these things happening. Incredible things happening every week. And God is in all of them. Jehovah alone doth lead him, and there is no strange God with him. There's no strange God with the man-child ministry. There's no strange God with the bride-man-child group. We're not going to have a strange God. We're not going to have a trio of gods or a quartet or a duo. There's only one God. His name is Jesus, which means Yahweh, the Savior. The Father, who is the Savior, because he accepted the sacrifice of his own son, the Christ. The Christ, who is also named Jesus after his own father. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. Let's turn now to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 53. And I'm going to change on my computer. Those of you off screen, I know you can't see that. But that's what I'm doing. Isaiah. Fifty-three, And we're going to go to verse 1. Okay. Reading from Rotherham's. Isaiah 53, verse 1 and 2. Who beloved, why uh, we have heard, excuse me, who believed what we have heard and the arm of Yahweh to whom it was revealed. Sorry, these glasses, I need new glasses. Verse 2, when he came up as a sapling before him, and as a root sprout out of dry ground, he had neither beauty nor majesty. When we beheld him, there was nothing to behold that we should desire him. Who is being spoken of here in the book of Isaiah? Jesus. It's a prophecy of Christ. That he was nothing special to behold. He, didn't, he wasn't a, the tallest uh, Jewish man. He wasn't the most handsome. He, uh, he, to look at him in the natural, as a matter of fact, they think he was about 5, what was it, 5'4", right around there, and stocky built because he was a woodworker. He didn't look like anybody special. He could have been my dentist. <laughs> You know, to, to look at him and desire him, there is nothing there. Don't you know the bride is the same way? Jesus was working in the world. And he also was, was doing what he needed to do as a righteous Jew, spiritually, until he was called into ministry. The bride saints have been working in the world. They've also been working in the church because they don't have their own church, their own vineyard. You'll see that in a moment. 
They've been working in the world and carrying on. So they've been sunburned. Jesus was sunburned. And the outward, he didn't look any, like anything special. It was in the spirit that people found out he was special. The bride saints, the beauty that they have is not the physical. It's the spiritual. They're going to see Christ looking through their face. They're going to see the love of God radiating out of them. They're going to be moved by the very presence of the Father through Christ, through you, bright saints. And that's what makes them beautiful. It isn't anything on the outside. It isn't anything that you could point at and say, oh, there's the most handsome, there's the most beautiful. No. It's going to be a spiritual beauty. With Jesus, it was a spiritual beauty. It was the wisdom of God and the presence of God that convinced. It wasn't the physical. Now let's turn to the New Testament. And we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And again, for clarity, I would like to read this from Rotherham's. So for those of you online, just bear with me for a moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. All right. Let's start at verse 10. In Rotherham's. It says this in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting verse, chapter 4, verse 10. We are foolish for Christ's sake, but ye prudent in Christ. We are weak, but ye mighty. Ye all glorious, but we dishonored. Until the present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and are buffeted and are wanderers, and toil working with our own hands, being reviled. We bless. Being persecuted, we hold on. Verse 13. Being defamed, we beseech. As the sweepings of the world, we have become the off -scor -scor scoring of all, even until now. The bride saints are humbled. The bride saints look like any other worker. They're abused. They're, they're, they're used by the church. They've been forced to work in their mother's house, in their mother's vineyards, all their years instead of their own. The woman looks dark. She looks sunburned. Nothing glorious. Nothing to be desired. Spiritually. Spiritually. She is beautiful to behold to those that can see it. And it's interesting, in the churches, they do see it. Because in the churches, the pastors know certain ones to call on. Well, you call on that one because they're, they're a prayer warrior. Call on that one because they know how to worship freely in the spirit. You call on that one, and, and that's how pastors do it. They're calling on the ones that are really the sold out ones they have a heart they have a, a hunger a desire for for more of christ and they they will push in the spirit that's the bright saints within the church working in their mother's vineyards and because of that they're sunburned but lovely they're the lovely ones because they're the ones that are working before the lord when they sing they're singing before the lord not singing to be stylish stylish and to be heard of people. I hate that kind of singing. I hate that. I have asked music ministers to step down because of that. I don't want to have a hoot nanny. I want to worship the Lord. And the music leader needs to worship the Lord. I don't want somebody praying that just wants to pray man's prayers or the prayers of their own mind. I want somebody praying in the Spirit of God. I want those people that are sold out to God. You see, they're beautiful in the spirit. Those people are beautiful in the spirit. And that's the people that the Lord is looking for. That's the people that are the bright saints. That's the people that are working in their mother's vineyards. As a pastor, I can tell you, that's the people the pastors look for. And that's the people that are, that are set forth and to be used. 
All right, time's up. I'll see you on the next teaching. Lord bless you.